Hi all, chapter 8.3 is solving equations by using quadratic methods. So there are a couple of equations that we have worked with in chapter 6 and 7 that when we were solving they gave us quadratics um, in the end that we needed to solve. So let's review those types of equations. The first one comes from chapter 7 and has a square root in it. And we should all be familiar with how to solve a problem with a square root in it. And step number one is to isolate that square root by itself. I like positives, so I'm going to move my square root to the right hand side. Step number two for solving these was to raise each side to a power to eliminate the root. So to get rid of a square root, we raise to the second power. Step three is then to go ahead and foil or multiply things out. The left hand side has to be foiled because it is a binomial that we're squaring. So we get x squared minus 10x plus 25 and that's going to equal x plus 1. And then we notice that this polynomial has degree 2, the highest coefficient is 2 and we see that right there the highest coefficient is 2 and to solve a quadratic we have a couple of choices now um, we can use completing the square we have a middle term here that won't cancel out so we would have to use completing the square if we wanted to use the square root property we could use the quadratic formula or the easiest method if it factors is to use the zero theorem factor zero factor theorem I'm sorry all right so let's let's see if we can factor this this polynomial right here so let's move everything to one side so we have an x squared minus 11 x plus 24 <clears throat> and ask ourselves the question are there factors of 24 positive 24 that add to negative 11 and I say there are Negative 8 times negative 3 is a positive 24, and they add to negative 11. So I am going to factor this. And then, and so I'm using the zero factor theorem. I set each of my factors with a variable equal to zero, and then I solve that. And so my two solutions, if they are both solutions, are 3 and 8. I'm going to go ahead and box them, but then we're going to go ahead and check. Let's check 3. If I do 3 minus the square root of 3 plus 1 minus 5 equals 0. Well, I know 3 plus 1 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. So I get 3 minus 2 minus 5 equals 0. That is not true, so I'm going to cross 3 off. That is not a solution. Let's try 8. 8 minus the square root of 8 plus 1 minus 5 equals 0. 8 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So does this one work? Yes, that one works. So we only have one solution here, and that is 8. So now I'm going to take you back further into Chapter 6 when we were solving rational equations. And if you remember from cha Chapter 6, to solve a rational equation, we need the LCD because we're going to multiply every term by the LCD. So if you remember back in chapter 6 when you had a trinomial and then your two other terms just had binomials in them, that trinomial typically factored into those two binomials. So I'm hoping that this trinomial here will factor into 2x minus 5 and x plus 3. So I know I'm looking good right now because 2, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. So now we're going to look at the factors of negative 15. And I have a 3 and a 5 as one of them. I know that if I multiply this 2 by a 3, I get 6. So if I can subtract a 5 from a positive 6, that should be my factors. So my LCD is going to end up being, let's write that out. My LCD is going to end up being 2x minus 5 and x plus 3. And to solve a rational equation, we multiply every term by that LCD. So this is going to be a tight squeeze, but I think we can squeeze it in. So we're going to have the numerator multiplied by the LCD. In that one, we're going to have the numerator only multiplied by the LCD in this. 
And the same over here. Ooh, and we did fit it in. It's squished, but it's there. Okay, so now we're gonna look and see what reduces. So I know this, these reduce. I hope you can see the yellow there. So let's go back. And now my final reduced polynomial. I have no more denominators. They all reduced out. I have 11 equals five times X plus three minus x times 2x minus 5. And if you remember, I did ask you not to multiply things out, just to write what's remaining so that we don't do things like forgetting to distribute our negative. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and distribute everything out. We get a 5x plus 15, because we're distributing that 5 across both of those. We're distributing the negative x across both of these terms. So we get a negative 2x squared plus 5x. So again, I want you to notice we have a quadratic, a squared term there. Let's go ahead and work through this quadratic. I like my leading coefficient to be positive, so I'm moving everything to the left-hand side. And I know it looks like a lot of work, but that's what I do. All right, 2x squared. We have a 5x plus a 5x, so that's 10x. So it's going to be a negative 10x. And then we have 15, so we're going to subtract 15, so we're going to get a negative 4 equals 0. And here we can divide out if we want to. We can divide everything by a negative 2. Well, if we move that over, that would be positive. We can divide everything by a 2 because my property of equality said if we do something to both sides, then my polynomial is still equal. So we get x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. And I want you to notice here there is absolutely no way that we can solve this using the square root property. So what I'm going to do in green is I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So a is 1, b is negative 5, and c is negative 2. So let's go ahead and fill those in. I have x equals negative b, so negative negative 5 is positive 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times a, a is 1, c is negative 2, so negative or 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8 all over 2a. 2 times 1 is 2. So let's go ahead and finish that off. 5, I mean x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 8 is 33 all over 2. And those are my final answers. Okay, so you can see how we're going to use the steps that we learned in previous sections to solve these two types of equations. We need to make the decision on how to solve the final quadratic. We can use the um, zero factor theorem if our quadratic, um, if our quadratic factors. We can use, if it doesn't factor, we can use either the quadratic formula or we can use um, completing the square along with the square root property. Okay, and that is it for this video. Go ahead and take your quiz.